I'm Ian Somerville and in this video I'm going to be introducing the topic of socio-technical systems. Systems which are rather broader than the technical software or software and hardware systems with which we might be more familiar. Let me start by talking about what do we mean by a system? Well, we use the term system to mean all sorts of different things. We talk about the education system, we talk about software systems, we talk about the system of governments. Um, but in this context, what I mean by a system is a purposeful collection of interrelated components that work together to achieve a common objective. So this is an example of a, a military system which is used for uh, ground surveillance there are lots of different components, hardware and software components, as well as people involved in the system. And they interact to provide the, the capability of, of ground surveillance across a large area. Now, the thing about systems is that they may include electronic and mechanical hardware, software and computers, and people are responsible for their installation and operation. Generally speaking, they're used by organisations, which are often quite large organisations. And these organisations are responsible for procuring and operating these systems. Systems have got lots of components that interact in complex ways, sometimes ways in which we don't fully understand. And it's the interaction of components that lead to system complexity. If we have components that don't interact, such as the rocks in a stone wall, then we don't have complexity. But when we have hardware and software elements that interact in all sorts of different ways, we inevitably end up with a complex system. And the behaviour of complex systems is often extremely difficult to predict. I like to think of two kinds of system. Technical computer-based systems, these are the, the classes of system we're familiar with in software engineering. They include hardware and software elements, but they're not self-aware. The system itself doesn't know what it's used for. So if I'm writing a book, a word processing system is a computer-based system that's used in the book writing, but it doesn't know itself that that's what it's being used for. A socio-technical system is a broader entity. It includes technical systems, but it also includes people who use and operate and who are influenced by the system. These people are aware of what's going on. So again, if we come back to the book writing example, a publishing system that's used to publish a book is not a technical system. It's a socio-technical system. It, it's all sort of people working together with technical systems to create the book and it's self-aware. That is, social technical systems know about themselves and know about their own existence. Another example of a socio technical system would be a weather forecasting system. Within that, there might be a technical system such as an automated weather recording system, but there are all sorts of other activities going on to create the broader socio-technical system. I think it's helpful to look at the different levels in a socio-technical system. And we talk then about the socio-technical system stack. And you can see from this diagram where software engineering as an activity falls within the stack compared to system engineering. And you see system engineering is a broader activity. I'm going to look at each of the levels of this stack in turn. At the bottom level, we have a set of hardware devices, some of which may be computers, some of which may be other kinds of device, almost all of which will now contain some kind of embedded system. Above that, we have an operating system, um, and the operating system is used to provide a set of common facilities to higher levels in the socio-technical stack. We have communications and data management. This layer is a set of middleware systems that allows the different components of the systems to interact and to exchange information. And above that, we have 
a whole range of application systems which are used to do all sorts of things which support the activities of a business or a, or a larger operation. These technical systems, these technical application systems are embedded in business processes, activities where people are involved and that are geared to support the way the business works. It's not that we don't need to think of it as a business. It could be a, a government body. It could be a, a defense department. It could be an army it, or, or anything like that. But it's when you have an organization, it has a set of processes which govern how it works. The organization itself has a set of strategic high level activities which are geared to support the business goals and which make use of the socio-technical systems within that organization. And the business goals could be something like make profit for shareholders, if it was a commercial business, educate students, if it was a school or university, or to win a war, if it was a government fighting uh, an enemy. Around the whole thing, and, and this is quite a vague and quite nebulous concept, there's the notion of society. Society establishes the laws, the rules and regulations in which we actually conduct our lives, in which businesses actually work. And these influence the socio-technical systems and therefore the technical systems which are used within that business. Now the thing about <coughs> The socio-technical system stack is that the layers are not isolated. We can't easily design APIs, if you like, which allow them to communicate. But they're actually quite closely intertwined. There are dependencies and interactions between the layers. And when we make a change in one layer, it ripples through the system. For example, if there's a, a change in regulations from society, say in the way banks operate, which is a current change that's actually going through many Western societies, that affects all sorts of things. It means that accounting systems have to be changed, which means that accounting system software has to be changed. We therefore need to think holistically about system design. We shouldn't confine our thinking to the technical systems, but think carefully how these interact with the broader socio-technical system and sometimes try and address problems in that broader socio-technical domain rather than confine them to the technical domain. When we're thinking about system dependability and critical systems, we need to take a socio-technical perspective. Technical systems will always fail at some point. We know that for sure. We cannot build failure-free systems. What we need to be able to do is to use the higher levels in the socio-technical system stack to trap these failures and ensure these failures don't have serious adverse consequences for a business, for an organisation and society. We use the, socio the, the affordances of people in the socio-technical system to help us recover from failure. And that's a topic which I'll return to in another video. In summary then, a system is a purposeful collection of interrelated components that work together to achieve a common objective. Socio-technical systems are systems that include technical systems, but also people and business processes that collaborate and interact with each other and which are geared to supporting some broader business goal. To achieve dependability, we need to contain failures within technical systems and we have to avoid them spreading out into the broader socio-technical system because that is where the adverse societal effects occur. You can download the slides that accompany this video from my SlideShare account.